Welcome back to Youth at your Friday night's online youth meeting. It is a joy and a privilege to host this for you. We are so excited to see you guys soon again. And for now it is online, so welcome to my lounge. And we wanna keep this as real as possible. We wanna keep it as authentic as possible with minimal edits. So maybe a small edit here and there if something really uh, worked out way differently. But we wanna keep it as real as possible. So we trust that you connect we trust that you engage and we trust that you participate in this online Friday night youth meeting. I want to start tonight off with Titus chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 just to set the scene again for why we do what we do. So let's listen to Titus chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. It says the following, For the faith of God's chosen ones and to lead and encourage them to recognize and pursue the knowledge of the truth which leads to godliness, based on the hope and divine guarantee of eternal life. That is why we do what we do. We are here to lead and encourage you to recognize the truth, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. We're here to lead you and encourage you to recognize Him and then pursue Him with everything that you have. And it's based on the eternal life, on the foundation um, that God is and that He has for us. So welcome to this online Friday night youth meeting. I trust that you will enjoy it. I trust that you will choose to receive tonight what the Holy Spirit has in store for you. It is currently matric end exams and this really makes the list to uh, do a quick, uh, just a newsroom moment for the matrix. You guys made the top of the list for our news flash. We are praying for you guys and we are encouraging you guys to study hard to prepare hard and to end well. So don't get discouraged, uh, don't get stressed, don't get full of fear for the exams, but we wanna pray with you and we're encouraging you all the way. So for all the matrix out there and whoever's viewing this video, maybe you have a sibling that is in matric and maybe you know someone that is in matric, let's continue to encourage them with, uh, with messages, let's continue to pray for them, but online right now, we believe that there's power in this moment, there's anointing in this moment. So let's pray for the matrix as they prep for the exams. Father, we thank you for every matrix student, not only of Patria Youth across, across South Africa that's writing matric in this moment. Father, we thank you for your strength, that you help them to focus as they study. Lord, we know that you are the giver of life, you are the giver of abilities from you, and in you is all wisdom and is all knowledge. So thank you, Lord, for giving us the ability to, to think, giving us the ability to, to create certain things and when it comes to, to studying. That we can study hard so that we can do what you've called us to do. You've called doctors, you've called um, engineers, you've called accountants. And for us to be those accountants and doctors and engineers, uh, we need to study hard. So I thank you, Lord, for a peace. I thank you, Lord, for a, a wisdom over the matrix. I thank you, Lord, that they can be excited to finish well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All the matrix, uh, please let us know how it's going. Uh, direct message us on Instagram. If you have uh, the WhatsApp numbers of some of our young working adult leaders that serve with us, please let us know what you are writing. Please let us know what your exam should is like. We would love to encourage you and uh, just continue to be with you, pray with you in these exam times. As you guys know, on a Friday night, we have this youth meeting that is pre-recorded uh, and then post this youth meeting, we have Instagram Live. However, quick news flash for tonight and tonight only, there will not be an Instagram Live discussion afterwards. Nothing bad happened. It's purely just a logistical and a technical um, matter for tonight. So for tonight, there's no Instagram Live, but I wanna put out the challenge. Why don't you phone a friend or connect with a friend over WhatsApp and you discuss what you took out of the sermon tonight. So you have your own live moment with a friend. Encourage them, share with them what you've learned out of this uh, sermon tonight. So no Instagram Live tonight. Next week, again, we'll have an Instagram Live after this YouTube video, but for tonight, why don't you phone a friend, text a friend, and, uh, and encourage one another on what you learned from the sermon. 
We're going to once again enjoy a beautiful moment of song, a beautiful moment of worship and praise. Chelsea and Cara, they back and they recorded a song for us this week. So we want to thank them for their efforts and their commitment and their time to pre-record a worship song. And again, I want to pray with you. And I just want to make sure again that we go into this moment of song. We go into this moment of celebration. It is powerful. It carries anointing. It is amazing to sing God's praises. It's amazing to give God back His breath that He breathed into our lungs. It's amazing to thank Him, to worship Him, to honor Him with music. But more than that, with our whole lives. Every thought, uh, every decision that we make. And we spoke about lots, uh, a lot about decisions this week. But before we go into the song, I want to pray for us. And I want to encourage you. Make the most of this moment that you're going to have. Uh, God is with you in the Holy Spirit right where you're at. And He wants to connect with you and work in your heart. So make the most out of this musical expression moment that you have. It's exciting. It's deep. It's powerful. It's beautiful. Um, so let's pray together before we sing this amazing song together. Father, we thank you for the breath that you breathe into our lungs. Uh, Father, we thank you that we can give it back to you tonight in, in song, in worship. Uh, thank you, Lord, for these amazing words that, that just describes how big you are, how great you are, how beautiful you are, how amazing you are. And Lord, we pray for every student viewing this, even if it's live tonight or, or after tonight, as they sing the song, as they see the words. Father, I pray that they will have a powerful meeting with you, a powerful moment with you, that in their hearts will be an awesome moment, because you are awesome. In Jesus' name, amen.
Jesus Christ, I thank you for a beautiful moment of praise, of worship, of adoration unto you. Lord, as the song sings, that all creation speaks your glory. As we look around us, we can see that in creation there was intelligent design. There was a creator. There was a painter that painted this painting. And we honor you for that. We acknowledge, Lord God, that you are that. You are that one that created everything from nothing. Thank you that we can stand in awe but not physically just standing in awe on our, on our feet, not physically just standing in awe with our hands raised, but our hearts. Our hearts are in awe of who you are and of what you've done. We worship you. We thank you for this amazing moment. Thank you, Lord, that every student viewing the sermon, their ears are open, their eyes are open, their hearts are soft to receive your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that your word will go out with power, that your word will go out with an anointing. Touch my lips, touch my tongue as I speak your word, that your word carries authority, that we don't have to defend your word, but we can boldly, humbly, passionately, with love, with truth, with grace, proclaim your word. Thank you that you love every single student viewing this. Fearfully and wonderfully you have made them. We honor you for who you are, Lord God of heaven, and earth. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm excited to share the sermon with you tonight and what we usually do on a Friday night for those that are maybe viewing this for the first time is we often put out Recognize and Patriot Youth Instagram posts throughout the week which then builds up to a Friday night. A Friday night gives us more time in sermon format to speak to you, to share God's word, where on a daily basis we are limited to time regarding video lengths, etc. So tonight again we're going to culminate this week's uh, teachings and devotions that we've put out for you on Instagram, on Patriot Youth's Instagram page, and we use a banner called Recognize uh, for that. So I'm excited tonight to share with you Recognize Your Location and I want to ask you and I want to encourage you to engage in this moment. Make notes, take photos maybe of the screen, something that stands out for you, a scripture that stands out for you. And what makes this nice is you can always view the YouTube video afterwards again. It's not like a live moment where you can't necessarily view it. So there's a bonus when we come to online sermons. I want to say that I love you guys, so value you guys, value God's word. So let's dig into your location. I want to remind us of the illustration of what the significance is of your location. If you think about a, a, a pin drop moment, if you put your GPS on, on your phone and you have a specific location, determined, uh, your location determines various things in life. Your location determines the type of decisions that you're going to make. Your location determines the type of direction that you need to go to. Your location is going to determine various physical things around you and I want to use that illustration but I'm going to link it spiritually because we live by faith and not by sight we are spirit beings so I want to focus on the spiritual aspect of location yet I want to help you with an illustration again just to kind of get your thoughts going of hey wow I guess my my location actually plays a big role here's our illustration for a moment you're finding yourself on a mountaintop, and obviously I guess that it was a bit of a journey to get to the mountaintop, but because of your location on the mountaintop, it's going to determine decisions. Let's go time of day. You're on the mountaintop, time of day. You're going to have to decide, am I going to continue? Am I going to go down? Am I going to pitch my tent now? Am I have, uh, do I have enough weather uh, guards regarding clothing and maybe tents and equipment? Your location determines various things. That location where you're finding yourself at, at the moment is going to determine direction. Am I going to turn left? Am I going to turn right? Uh, depending on your journey that you, uh, that you are currently on. It's an illustration, but I want you to recognize that your location plays a massive role. And here's the angle of tonight. If you're going to make decisions based on the mountaintop, but you're going to make decisions that you are finding yourself on a canoe down a river, your decision making in your directions and that which flows from it is going to be crucially different. 
having um, a, a water, a wetsuit rather, having a wetsuit on a mountaintop might not be the wisest of moves. Uh, just for illustration, having a, um, a canoe pedal, having an oar on a, on a mountaintop, I don't think it's going to help much. Okay, so that's what I want to illustrate with your location in the spirit is important because you operate out of your location. And I want to use it as the illustration for us. And I quickly want to just set the scene again when it comes to our spiritual location, that to appreciate our location as sons and daughters of God, we need to quickly just remember our old location. Because all of us were in this specific moment that I'm going to share right now. And I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 2. And it says the following. My screen is to my right. So that's why I'm going to look to my right. But this will come up on your screen. Ephesians 2. And here's your old location. For all of us. Uh, we were here. And maybe possibly some of you still viewing this. Maybe you are still finding yourself here. And if this is you, my prayer is that you will recognize God. That you will turn from your sin. And you will follow him wholeheartedly. Lord of every area of your life. So here's, for the most part, our old location. As for you, viewing the sermon, me preaching the sermon, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. How's that about a location? The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time. Again, location. This is where you were. Gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. As we read Ephesians 2, listen to the decisions, listen to the direction, listen to the thoughts that Paul is painting. This is what it looks like when you're trapped in sin, when you're still living for yourself. When you are still serving the kingdom of darkness, the enemy. These are the type of things. You walk in disobedience, the cravings of the flesh. Your decisions were flesh-based. It was, what can I get out of this? Self-gratification. Following its desires and thoughts. This was our old location. Ephesians 2, verse 2 to 4. But, listen to this. Your new location. But because... There's the but, but because, this sets the scene, this changes everything. But because of His great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. So we were finding ourselves in a sinful location. While we were there, God took us and placed us in a new location if we would accept what He's done. He didn't require of us to do everything right, okay, I'll give you a new location. He paid already. God, Jesus, paid for a new location while you were still finding yourself in the wrong spot. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God, and here's your new location, and God raises up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So kind of compare the um, kingdom, of, uh, kingdom of darkness you lived at that with the cravings of your flesh, following its desires and thoughts. And here you are, and it is uh, seated with Jesus in the heavenly realms. What a new location. The old and the new. And I want to encourage us with tonight's sermon, living out of your new location. Often high school students are confused. They're tired because of what this world offers. Media is bombarding us. With various options. It's giving, it's giving us the opportunity to, to um, take hold of false identities. And I'm saying it as an opportunity because we have free will to uh, engage in that or not, to, con to be consummated in that or not. The power of sin is broken, but it's still available out there. But God has set us free from that. He's given us the, the power of the Holy Spirit to say no to those things and the free will by choice. But uh, the world is giving us many options to still sin. Facebook regarding a false identity, Instagram. There's many things out there. I need love from people. I need acceptance from people. Uh, I need gratification for myself. But I want to encourage us tonight. Let's live out of our new locations. Way better than the first one. Can't even compare it. Can't even compare it. The new one is so amazing. 
so glorious by the grace of God, by the mercies of God. So, in your language, we had a status update. <laughs> if, you had to, if you had to do a WhatsApp status update or an Instagram feed post, just for the sake of uh, the generation probably viewing this, you had a status update, old location, new location, and here's your status update. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, therefore, therefore, so please go read the previous few verses, setting the context for therefore. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, location, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. The old has gone, the new is here. Recognize your location if you are in Christ. The old is gone. Gratifying the desires of the flesh, the power that sin had over you, living for yourself. It is gone. The new has come. Question, why then do we live out of our old location? Why do we still carry canoes up to the mountaintop? Why do we still carry oars up to the mountaintop? Why do we have a wetsuit um, hiking the mountain? Instead of shoes that are prepped for the ground, instead of clothing that is prepped for the environment. You know what I'm saying? Just the location illustration again. We live out of the wrong location, which leaves us frustrated, which leaves us confused because the world cannot be married to the kingdom of God. We can't marry those two. And that's why many people are frustrated. Like, man, I'm not feeling victorious because here's the thing. Jesus has already given you the victory. We must live out of that and not for that. But the world is painting a picture that you're never going to make it if you don't have the biggest house. So you're always in living for the next, living for the next. If you don't have this amount of money, if your degree doesn't say this, if your, um, if your status doesn't say this, that's living for a fleshy location. And again, by the mercies and the grace of God, we have a new location. So, location determines our values. It's point number one. Location determines our values. Now here's the question, is it values first and then location, or location first and then values? And I'm going to link it to the following. If my values could reach me into my new location, it's again based on me. If me changing my values, if me changing it um, had the power to take me from sin to, to, to light, it was based on me. But it said in Ephesians 2, but God was rich in mercy. So I accept his work that he's done by the grace of God, by the mercies of God. I lay down my life. I submit my will. And because I'm in this new location, all of a sudden my values changed. All of a sudden I've got new desires, which is going to um, be discussed in the sermon. All of a sudden I've got a new worldview. I'm looking at the world through a new lens, through the lens of Jesus Christ. So your location determines your values. So I want to... I want to encourage us tonight, do we recognize that our values have actually changed or are we living with an old garment that we need to take off? 2 Peter 1 verse 2 to 4 describes this for us. So listen to location and listen to your values. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. God calling us His glory, His goodness. That location, His divine power, that is the location that you have been brought into by the blood of Christ. Now let's go for the, for the values. The, through these, He has given us His very great and precious promises. That through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Again, you've escaped the world caused by evil desires. You've got a new location. What is my values? It is His precious promises. It is His precious goodness. My values have changed. I'm a new person. The old has gone. The new has come. High school student, I want to pause for a moment. I want to ask us, what is making us think that we're still living towards victory? What is making us think that it's still self-effort? What is, what is shouting out from the sideline to say, you can't make it. You will never make it. It's, it's very much based on the enemy lying to us, deceiving us, or because of our lack of knowledge of what God has done, we keep on falling into these traps on the sideline. I want to encourage you. God's word says, the old is gone, the new has come. Take it. 
It is yours. You've got new values. Live out of your spiritual new values. Great promises, His glory and His goodness. Your location determines your values. Point number two, your location determines the way you pray. Your location determines the way you pray. This is very practical. And I trust tonight that you will get some practical tools as we go uh, through the sermon. It's one of our, of our heart's desires is to help you go practical in your journey with God. We often pray and we have the mentality to beg God for stuff. We have the mentality of if I pray hard enough, if I wake up early enough, if I, if I, if I, if I, again, a lot, lot, lot based on me, my, uh, my self-righteousness. But if you understand your new location, you were a slave, old location, you were a slave, now you are a son or a daughter. Your prayer life changes. You speaking to God changes. You speaking as a son, you speaking to him as a daughter, you listening as a son, you listening as a daughter, you hearing his voice. Um, I love you. You are valued. You are treasured. I've made you in my image. I've made you in my likeness. So your prayer is, Father, thank you that you love me. Father, thank you that you accept me. Thank you that I'm worthy in your eyes. Thank you that I'm clean. Thank you that I'm holy. Thank you that I'm significant. And not, Lord, please make me significant. Lord, please make me accepted. The old has gone and the new has come. So by our way of speaking to God, praying, communicating with God, we can recognize, am I living out of my old location or am I living in my new location? Often our, our worldly fathers, and I'm saying this with a lot of love, with a lot of grace, but our worldly fathers have disappointed us in a specific way and because of those father figures, uh, we have a wrong view of our Heavenly Father. And you were might used to, to begging for, you might, you were might uh, have been used to, to working for every bit of thing that you ever uh, had to attain. We live in a world that is not gracious. Uh, God's grace is undeserved, unmerited. You cannot deserve the grace of God. He's way too holy and we were way too sinful. It is His free gift. Listen to Paul speaking in Ephesians 1 verse 15 to 16 and he's encouraging the church in Ephesus to recognize their location and he's praying out of this new location. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, because of our faith in Jesus, we have a new location. Because of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. Paul is praying because of this new location that these people in Ephesus have because of their faith in Jesus. High school students, I want to encourage you to recognize the way that you pray. Are you praying as a slave? Are you praying as a son and as a daughter? Point number two in our new location is our new location brings new purpose. When we lived in, in sin, when we lived in darkness, when we lived in our own gratification, we, our purpose was to sin. The job description of a sinner is to sin. That's why it doesn't help that we um, help people out of mannerisms. If the heart hasn't changed, if the location hasn't changed, people do bad stuff. Um, if people just, I'm going to use a, an external um, moment for, for a while, just for illustration. If uh, there's a, someone that is still living in sin, for example, and part of that might be to uh, spend their their lives with, with alcohol and alcoholism, well, if they just stop drinking, doesn't mean that they now become a Christian. I mean this sensitively, but it's the illustration. It's the heart that changes. The new location brings the values, also new purpose. So let's recognize Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10. Your new location has new purpose. For it is by God's grace you have been saved, new location through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. It's not your values, it's the gift of God. New location, new values, now new purpose. Not by works that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Purpose, which God prepared in advance for us to do. High school students, you have an amazing purpose in God. For we are God's handiwork, 
created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This type of work, this type of purpose, is not that which brings us stress, which brings us anxiety, which makes us just wipe uh, sweat off our foreheads because we are, are, are tired and weary. This is purpose in God. Living in God's purpose is exciting. Living good in God's purpose brings life because it flows from a new location. Thank you, God, that by your grace through faith, I have a new location and I'm living purposefully out of that. A friend of mine, he says it in the following regarding an old location thinking. I wake up to go to work, to get paid, to buy the bread so that I can get strength so that I can get up the next morning to go to work, to get the money, so with the money I can buy the bread, so the next day I can go to work. See the, the, the old mindset? See the slavery in that? No life, no joy. Thank you, God, for purpose in you, and I live out of that. We don't, we're not alive to just go to work, to get money, to buy bread, so that I can have strength, so that I can just do the same. It's purpose in God. It's out of a new location. Point number three, your location determines your thoughts. Your new location determines your thoughts. And Ephesians 4 verse 22 to 24 describes it so well. So we're going to read for a moment Ephesians 4, 22 verse 24 and 22 to 24. And I'm going to share old location thoughts and new location thoughts. You were taught with regard to your former way of life old location, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. There's a new way of thinking in our new location that is there because of the blood and the work of Jesus Christ, the resurrection. We have a new way of life. It says, put off the old self. Put off the old way of thinking. Here's a new attitude in your mind. In Matthew 5, 6 and 7, Jesus preaches a sermon that we call the Sermon on the Mount. And he goes through kingdom principles. And if you read these uh, three chapters specifically with a fleshly mindset, you might think, this is, this is crazy. For instance, the following. Jesus speaks in the way that he says, if someone asks you in this context to walk one mile, walk with him two miles. If someone asks you to walk one mile, walk with him two. And the thought doesn't make sense. But it wasn't for the flesh. It's in the spirit. It's a kingdom principle. Back in the day, because of uh, the, the, the empire that governed, it was law. If a Roman soldier would ask you, you walk with me for a mile, to, to carry their stuff. So in the first mile, the Roman soldier has the upper hand. It's, it's legal. You have to do it. In the second mile, there's a change. You see? But in, in our way of thinking, like, nah, after one mile, I'm going to drop his stuff. This is where the law ends. This is where uh, my work to him ends. But if I walk the second mile, who's got the upper hand? Who's got the influence? <laughs> see? Because it's, it's not law to walk within the second mile. Only mile one. Mile two, hey, I want to I wanna check you about why, why are you doing this? I've got a new way of thinking. I've got a new way of doing. I'm a child of God. I walk in the kingdom of light, not in darkness. And when it comes to recognizing our thoughts because of our location, we think differently. We think like a king's kid. We don't think like a slave. We think like a king's kid. How does a king's kid think? Well, my dad is the king, so he's going to provide. My dad is the king, he's going to protect. My dad is the king, he's going to make me help decisions. That's the type of life that we've been called to live. Our new location brings us a new way of thinking. Again, I want to read. To put off your old self. Leave the old, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. To put on the new self, created in God. Lord, help me to think like you want me to think. How do I, and what do I think about this person? Do I think about the situation, what I can get out of it? Do I think about the situation, what you 
can get out of it. The other person, the other party. Your location determines our thoughts. Next point, your location determines your decisions. Here again, I just quickly want to uh, go to the illustration of the mountain again. I'm on the mountaintop in the illustration, and because of my location, I've got decisions to make. Am I going to continue with my hike? Yes or no? Am I going to pitch my tent now? Yes or no? What is the weather doing because of the surroundings? Is it jacket time? Is it not? These decisions based on my location. My decisions look different if I'm on a raft in the river. It's a different location. Listen to Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 10, specifically when it comes to the decisions because of our new location in Christ. For you were once darkness. Again, it's kind of sketching the comparison between our old location and our new. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in, in the Lord. Location in the Lord. Live as children of light. Decisions. What decisions do you want to make? As a child of the light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So I'm going to quickly just break down our, our new location, determines our decisions, and it's going here from goodness, righteousness, and truth. It speaks of fruit. Fruit is something we can see. Decisions and the outflow of decisions is something I can see. If I decide to buy a new car, there's the, the proof. There's the fruit. There's a new car. If I decide to do something different to my backdrop, there's going to be a fruit of. If I decide to train more, there's going to be a fruit. There's going to be a circumstance uh, or something that throws out. If I decide to eat more, you get the point. Goodness, righteousness, truth. God's word says there's no one good but God. No one's good but God. So my decisions should be based on the goodness of God. Righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness means I'm in right standing with God, which only comes by God's grace and my faith in Him that have cleansed me from my sin and I'm back in communion with God. So my decisions is made is made out of my relationship with God because I can see Him face to face. Because I've got a father-son-like relationship, my decisions are sound. Um, and truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. John 14, 6. So my decisions is based on, is this based on truth? Is this based on God's word? Yes or no? And then I love the last part. And finally, what pleases the Lord. Hebrews eleven six tells us, that by a faith, we please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So again, my faith gives me my location because it's in God. And then my faith also determines the decisions I'm going to make. Because if I make decisions based on faith, not by sight, it pleases God. Our decision-making changes completely. What a joy to not make decisions based on what I can get out of it, but to make decisions based on the goodness, the righteousness and the truth of who God is. I want to end off with a very important point, and I want to encourage you to stay connected for a moment. Our location is spirit empowered. We're speaking a lot of decisions, we're speaking a lot about direction, we're speaking a lot about thoughts, we're speaking a lot about how I pray, and I want to remind us it's not based on us. The location is bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the empty grave, but we live out of victory, but not alone. Jesus in, in John 14, 15, and 16, I'm nearly kind of builds the story as he, for the most part, in those three chapters, prays and speaks to his disciples just before he's going to get crucified and reminds them, when I go away, Jesus speaking, when I go away, I will send you the helper. I will send you the spirit of truth that will lead you into all truth. Acts 1 verse 8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. So again, that purpose that comes out of our new location, that purpose of being God's witness is not based on my strength. It's based on the power of the Holy Spirit, which is what? Father, I can't do this alone. I need you with everything that I have. I can't do this sermon if you don't empower. I can't do this sermon if you don't anoint. I can't do this sermon out of my own then it doesn't carry what God wants it to carry. Here's our verse for the location is spirit empowered. It's in Ephesians 1 verse 18 to 20. 
We read it earlier where Paul was praying for the people in Ephesus because of their faith in the Lord Jesus. Their, their new location is by faith, by grace. He's praying for them. And here's where he's praying, verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Listen to verse 19. For a location that's spirit empowered. And his incomparably great power for us who believe. What gets us our location in the first place? Our belief in God, our faith in God, us turning from the world. And his incomparably great power for us to believe. Raymond, what do you want to compare it to? I can't. It's incomparably great. It's incomparably great. High school students, we live confused, tired lives because we don't believe in the incomparable great power for those who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength He exerted when He raised Christ from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly realms. Listen to me. God's Word says, The same Spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives in you. Same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. It wasn't like this before. Old location, sinful. New location in Christ. The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. He empowers us to make godly decisions. He empowers us to pray. Uh, in fact, God's word says that the spirit enables us to, to pray uh, not only with our minds, but also in the spirit. And that's a sermon for a different day. The Holy Spirit enables us to walk out His purposes. It's by His power that we are His witnesses. High school students, I want to to land tonight and I want to encourage you. Live out of your new location that Jesus Christ paid for, that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. Your identity is in Christ. We live out of that. I also want to ask and I want to encourage you. Recognize the things that steal from this new location. What makes you think that you don't have the new location? If I approach a stop street and I choose to just go over the stop street, it doesn't make the stop street non-stop. It's still a stop street. I chose just to, just to continue. It doesn't, the fact that I don't feel doesn't take away that God is. God is absolute truth. His word is absolute truth. His Holy Spirit is with me. I live out of my identity in Him. If I feel like it or not, Truth stays truth. His empowerment stays his empowerment. He stays who he says he is. Even if it doesn't feel like it. Even if it doesn't look like it. We live by faith and not by sight. I want to encourage you with this. I want to bless you with this. And I just quickly want to remind us that we don't have Instagram live tonight. um, Just for practical and logistical reasons. No one did anything wrong. There was no problems. Just for tonight. We don't have Instagram live in discussion. But phone a friend, WhatsApp a friend, and discuss this new location that you have in Christ. Next week, Friday, we'll have a sermon again, time of worship, some questions, some news, as well as Instagram Live afterwards. I want to pray for you, and we're going to have a great weekend. Abba Father, I thank you for every high school student viewing this. I thank you, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will open, continue to open their eyes and open their ears and soften their hearts that they will recognize their location. Lord, that this world will have nothing on them because greater is he that lives in them than he that is in the world. That they will not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the ring of their minds. They can taste and approve what your will is, your good, your pleasing, and your perfect will as we read in Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Thank that you love them. Thank that that you are for them, that you fight for them, that they are not thrown in the gut to try and figure this out by themselves. You are with them every single step. May we surrender completely to you daily and follow the leading the leading of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a great weekend. See you next week.